one time I said to Bruce, he said, let's talk about rules. And, Ru and, and Bruce said, hell with rules. And he started blasting them with that Wing Chun front hand punch. So, uh, <laughs> so Wong Jaman turned around and started running from one door to the other. I think he ran around two or three times. He stumbled and Bruce got on top of him and was getting ready to lay him out. And he yelled in Chinese, couldn't speak English. I give up, I give up. So Bruce said, turn around and tell you, you guys that you've given up. That, uh, uh, you know, and so he turned around, said Chinese to him, I'm giving up, I'm giving up. So then he said, okay, get out of here and don't bother me again. So that was just, uh, 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 what happened? So anyway, I don't know, you want to have him ask me any questions or anything like that. But later on, what happened was, there was not, uh, you couldn't blame Wong Chapman. He didn't start that fight. Uh, uh, there was a guy named David Chin, who was the intermediary. He was one who went over and told Wong Jotman that Bruce Lee said this to him, and then he would go tell Bruce. And of course, Bruce was very quick tempered. You know, right off the bat, he said, "You tell that so and so to come over here." And so, so David Chin went and organized a group and brought him over there, and uh, and that's what happened. And and basically. I don't know how they can make a, a movie. I don't know how long that movie is. If, uh, if maybe, maybe it's an hour, 90 minutes, you know? Now what I want to do with DVD is just get uh, Linda to talk about the fight, and, and I'll tell what I heard on the phone, and then do some stuff about what Bruce was doing before that fight up in Oakland. In other words, what he uh, started in Seattle was it, uh, uh, you know, what was the uh, uh, Jun Fan uh, Jun Gong Fu, uh, like Wong Chun. Then when he came to uh, Oakland, he was bringing that to Oakland, but after the fight, it changed his whole approach. He realized that you don't uh, try to forward punch somebody running from you. You're going to have to grab the guy, jerk him back, and, and, and immobilize him. So that's why uh, after the fight, uh, the next day I went to see him and, and I asked Jimmy, I said, where's Bruce? He said, down in the garage working out. So I went there and he had a chain hanging from a, a glove hanging from a chain and he was bouncing around at Muhammad Ali shooting jabs and hooks with his right hand. And when he got, uh, when he, he saw I was standing there, he stopped and he said, Leo, you know what I'm going to call this? Jit Kundo. Mm -hmm. I said, what in the heck is that? He said, uh, uh, the way of the stopping fist. Uh, and, 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 and so the idea of Jeet Kune Do was conceived right after that fight. And he created that, that word, that, that uh, name, uh, right there. And then he took it to L.A. and then he developed it from there. So there is an argument between the L.A. guys and, uh, that it was started in L.A., but it wasn't right after that fight, and, and, he, and I was the first one to hurt it. He called it Jit Kendo, and, um, and then he totally went into uh, boxing. So when I saw him again a few months, uh, a few weeks later, he had stacks and stacks of uh, Muhammad Ali 8mm uh, uh, films, and he would, uh, he would uh, screen it on the, on the, uh, on the wall, and he would lay down with his uh, with a mirror, and he would look at it uh, from the mirror, and it looked like uh, 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 he, uh, Ali was fighting uh, southpaw, right hand forward. Uh, so that was how he started. He loved Ali, he loved Ken Norton, and he had all those uh, uh, eight millimeter stuff. And so that that is uh, is what I uh, 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 you know know, and what uh, he shared with me. And, but the, down through the you know years, a, a, as other people that didn't see the fight start, uh, you know, creating certain things, that you get away from uh, from the the essence of it, you know. Yeah. And you mentioned when you're talking about Muhammad Ali, and you mentioned Ken Norton. Now, do you know that uh, Ken Norton broke Muhammad Ali's jaw? Yeah, <coughs> yeah. In the in the first fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our second fight was it? First fight. First fight. Yeah, yeah well, because yeah. I, I was. I was with Norton. I was with Norton uh, uh, when he was getting ready for his second fight. Yeah. I think that, that was that. Which one? 
One of them was at Yankee Stadium. Uh, was it that fight? Or the first, the first fight was in San Diego. Yeah, yeah the second fight at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I, no, I wasn't sure. They fought three times, didn't they? No, twice. Twice, twice yeah. So uh, Norton, uh, and I asked, I asked uh, Ken Norton. I hung out with him one afternoon at at the gym over in uh, in Inglewood or some, uh, uh, somewhere down there, uh, Ir Irvine. And I don't know where. I mean, uh, 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 oh. yeah. Was Inglewood. Inglewood, yeah. One of the uh, gyms there. Cause I think he's a uh, coach with Slater. And but anyway, I talked to him and I said, Hey, Ken, uh, uh, who do you think gonna win, you or uh, Ali? He said, well, you know, I think we both uh, are in good physical condition. It's all the me mental edge. He didn't say, so he, he reached in his pocket, pull out uh, uh, a little book, which I, I have two of them. Uh, um, how to, you know, what is it? Um, uh, something about how to grow rich or something like that. <laughs> Did you also meet uh, Ken Orton Jr.? No, no I, I haven't, I've never met Ken Orton Jr. Uh, so, uh, no, Think and Grow Rich, that's a, the name of the title. Napoleon, yeah, I, Napoleon, Hill. Napoleon Hill, that's right. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, he told me, uh, he said, this has a lot to do with how you train your mind. That's what he said to me. And then uh, and then he said, uh, maybe I ought to have you to go with me uh, and be my bodyguard. I said, no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, what style was what? I think it was Bach Pai, the Northern style. How old was he? I have no idea. I think maybe he was in his late 20s or early, th late 20s, I think. Bruce was how old, Precious? Yeah, at that time, Bruce was, uh, um, he was probably uh, in his mid 20s. Yeah, because when I met him, he was about 19 or 20, you know. So, um, Are you 12 years older, Harley? Huh? Yeah, I'm 12 years older. He was born in 40, 1940, and I was born in 1928. Yeah. So you, you mentioned that Bruce and Jimmy went to visit him after the fight? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, after the fight, uh, uh, Bruce and Jimmy Lee went to Jackson Cafe. You see, Wong, John, uh, Wong Johnman was not a uh, um, Shaolin priest. He was just a waiter at Jackson Cafe in San Francisco. And... Um, so afterwards, uh, they went to the. They decided to go over to uh, San Francisco. So they came, went to the Jackson Cafe, stood at the doorway, and at that time, uh, um, uh, Wong Dotman was was wiping table, holding this tea. He put a little bit of tea there, and then he wiped the wiped the table with the cloth. Then when he saw them in the doorway, he spilled all the tea on the table, and then uh, Bruce and Jimmy. Uh, kind of uh, crack a smile and giggle, turn around, and walked out. That was it. <laughs> Leo, I got a question. I heard, a sh I heard part of the story was that when Long Doc was basically playing Bruce, going through, that he ended up scratching Bruce a bit. Yeah, he did. Uh, what the, Bruce was doing this, you see, so, and, and running after him, and he was like this. And he had a, a couple of scratches on his neck. And he, he, when I saw him that next day, he said, yeah, he, he scratched me, you know, because he's running and swinging his arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so finally he stumbled, and then, and then Bruce up on top of him. But uh, that is actually what happened. And if you might say anything else, they try and twist history, you know. Yeah. So, so the witnesses, in the, they, he locked the door and didn't let them in? You said they let all ten of the other people in? Or oh, they all came in. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, um, see, Bruce had, um, I mean, Jimmy had rented that building downtown Oakland. They used to have a car, car dealership there. And then uh, they didn't stay there too long because I remember I used to come down on Wednesday night also, too, I, and then just Bruce was teaching privately. So there about four or five of us go on Wednesday, and, and, and a couple of the guys said, uh, I'm uh, I'm not gonna come back anymore. I said why? He said all Bruce is talking about is just talk. He don't do anything. But if you think about it, he shared some information, very valuable information on those Wednesday nights. He would talk about closing the gap, talk about hitting from angles, and they were uh, he was teaching you how to fish. Yeah. But the Kimball guy was there. 
He said, well, I'll go back and train uh, uh, on Wednesday over at the Kempo place because at least I learned some, some tricks. I learned some techniques every time I go there. But Bruce would, would talk, go on and on and, and talk intellectually. He talked concept, conceptually, uh, you know, uh, for almost two hours. And then if you don't listen, you miss it. You just you want a demonstration of techniques. You're not going to uh, learn how to fish. See? So. Who is your influence as a boxer? Uh, my influence, um, I like Joey Maxim because he became my personal friend later. And Joey is a great defensive fighter. And I always, and Willa Pistrano, uh, all those guys, because uh, the reason is, uh, I learned early in life, I, I got knocked out twice. And I said, I don't want to be knocking out, I want to find out how to fight defensively too. And those guys had good footwork. Yeah, Joey um, uh, came to Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, he, he beat a guy named Bob Sykes, who was a local hero. Well. He went 10 rounds and he didn't want to win one round. I mean, Joe just jumped in, hit him, back out, hit him, back out. And by the time he got through with him, he didn't knock him out. He just beat him up pretty bad. I was impressed with uh, with how he did the footwork, you know. And then there was um, uh, Willie Pastrano. Someone said, well, he can't even break an egg. But, but the thing is, he was world light heavyweight champion. And he was an overweight uh, kid. And when he went into boxing,